Hey everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show. So the other day, an interesting thing happened. I was working on a project where somebody sent me a massive point cloud, and this was not big. It was really, really big, like billions of points. And so it really started to choke the system down. So I decided that I was going to run some functions on it and optimize the point cloud inside of Cloud Compare. But uh, on this particular laptop that I have here, I've got 32 gigs of RAM and on an older machine, I had 64. And so I haven't run into this a lot, but it was really causing some slowdowns on my machine. So what I thought I would try is some of the command line functions inside of Cloud Compare. Now, actually, command line allows you to run some functions on some different point clouds or meshes or whatever um, that you would normally do inside of Cloud Compare, but you don't have to actually open the uh, program. And it's actually really quite efficient because it just kind of runs in the background and there's some windows that pop up and stuff like that, but you're not actually opening up Cloud Compare. So this video, I'm going to show you how you can work with command line and run a number of typical functions, but it should give you some of the basics about working with command line functions in Cloud Compare so that you can do other stuff on your own later on. So let's get to it. So a lot of people know about command line or they've heard about it, but maybe they're afraid to get started with it. So what I'm going to be doing is walking through a really basic step-by-step -step method of how you can get going here with command lines inside of Cloud Compare. So I got to do a little bit of grounding before we actually do the command line stuff, but keep in mind that I am working on a Windows system. And so when you're working on a Mac system, this could be a little bit different. So some of the syntax and that sort of thing might be different. I don't know because I don't use Mac, but I do have it working on Windows and I imagine it's going to be quite similar. All right, so first things first, um, I'm going to be working with a couple of point clouds and I'm just going to move them over here so you can see what I've got here. So one is a parking lot E57 file and the other one is this Ford SUV. OK, so these two files are the two and these are located on my D drive. So I've just put them in the root drive and this, it's a secondary drive. It's just a convenient location for me to work from. Let me move these over here and I'm going to load them up just to give you an idea for the size. So uh, this parking lot here is almost two gigabytes. The Ford SUV one is about 74 uh, megabytes here. So um, let me bring up the parking lot and then give you a look. OK, so this is saying how many points? About 134 million points is what it looks like. So you can see it's taking a little while to load. Now, this is not a point cloud that is massive, massive that I'd be worried about, but I just wanted to do something or have something that was a decent size. And you can see inside of Cloud Compare, it actually runs uh, pretty well. It's quite fluid. So no real problem there. If I click on this actual point cloud here inside of the database tree, when I move down, you can see that I've got 134 million points. So not bad. It's a decent size point cloud. And uh, this was done with a laser scanner. Yeah, this was a laser scanner project that I did. So uh, that's one thing that we're working with. Let me bring in, let me shut that off and let me bring in the other, which is the Ford SUV. Okay, so this one was done with an iPhone uh, LiDAR scanner. And if I click on this one, you'll see that I've got about 5 million points. So this is not a lot. I'm just using this one for some other examples or some other functions that we're going to run. But basically, those are the two. And actually, they're they're sort of sitting on top of each other. So when I turn on the parking lot and the Ford SUV, you see that I've sort of aligned it so that the uh, SUV is sitting in the parking lot at a certain spot here. Okay, but they are, in fact, two separate point clouds that are just uh, inside of Cloud Compare. So that's what we're dealing with. But now let's talk about command line and we're going to get back to this. OK, so if we want to get into the command line uh, window or whatever, uh, there are different ways that you can do this. If you have a search bar at the bottom of your windows, you can just type in the search bar command and then it'll pop up. You just click on it and it'll come up. You can do a search on the uh, 
you know, by going to Windows and then doing a search that way. But there's a shortcut key and it's just the Windows key plus the R key. Okay. If you do Windows plus R, it's the run here. And there could be another function or another command in here. But if you just type in CMD, okay, just like how I have here, CMD, and then click OK. Okay. It basically pops up here. You'll get this little window. Okay. This thing, this guy right here. Um, this is useful and it allows us to type in commands. Now, a couple of things I'm going to talk about, just some basic um, uh, shortcuts or little things that you can do here uh, while you're typing to save a bit of time. So you can see right now that I'm in C colon users e lisho and uh, or E-L-I-S-C and here uh, you know, I can move the window around. Now I can maximize this window. I can have it take the entire screen. And the text size, if, it, if you're working with a smaller monitor or whatever, you can adjust this. So if you hold down the control key and then use the mouse scroll wheel, you'll see that this gets larger and smaller. Okay, so that's kind of useful because the text gets larger. And so I'm going to make it a little larger because it may be easier to see on the screen here for you guys. So this is what I'm going to be dealing with. And let's see, there are a number of commands that you can use inside of uh, the the little shell here or whatever that we're using. So, and I remember these from a really long time ago with, with working with basic and everything else, uh, geez, decades ago. One of them is going to be directory functions. So inside of this directory, if I type in dir and I hit enter, you'll see that it gives me a whole list of uh, different types of folders that are in underneath that ELISC uh, directory. Okay. So, uh, these are all the different folders that are there and I could go into those folders. So if I want to jump into one of those folders, let's say I want to jump into my, my desktop over here, I have to go into change directory, CD space, and I have to type desktop exactly as it's shown. So capital D S K T O P and hit enter. And you'll see now I'm in desktop here. So if I type in directory again, D I R, Okay, it gives me a list of everything that is inside of my desktop right now. So that's useful. So if you need to change directories going forward or going back, that's helpful. Now, if I want to just go to back where I was, just to the ELISC directory, um, there's a little CD and then you type in dot dot. So CD dot dot and hit enter and you see it goes back one. Okay, so if I do the same thing, CD dot dot it goes back one. So change directory, two dots or two periods, and it pops back. So now I'm just in the users. Now I can also go to a different directory. If I just want to go straight to my D drive, for example, I can just go D colon. So just type in D colon enter, and you see it switched directly to a different disk. So if I type in the path name with the folders and everything else, I can move quickly between those directories, so long as I remember uh, what they are. Let's see what else is there. Um, there are other commands that you can use here. So for example, um, you can type in time and it gives you time. Uh, you can type in um, like a, a ping command or like IP config. And um, I'm not using these for cloud compare. I'm doing these for a reason to show you some things. Um, and then directory again, something like that. So um, I've typed in a number of commands and some of the keys that you can use here are the up key and the down key. So if I click on the up key, Okay, the up arrow is what I'm talking about. Uh, you'll see that I have DIR here. If I go up again, now I have IP config. If I go up in again, it shows me time. And I can go up and down. I can use the arrow keys to go up and down. And I can cycle through all the different commands that I previously typed in here. And this is useful because when you're putting in long path names, you don't want to sit there and type them out again. So you're better off just, you know, using the up arrow, going to a previous command, and then changing those. It's super, super helpful. Uh, the other thing you can do uh, that I haven't said here is if I have something here in the uh, on the command line and I want to get rid of it, just hit the escape key. Okay, the escape key just wipes anything that's there out. Uh, what else is there? Oh, F7. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I hit F7 and you'll see that you get a list of all the different commands and you can use the up key and down key like this. And basically you just hit the number. So if I want to do, uh, you know, change the rest, well, change, let's say I, I do DIR, that's zero. So I'm just going to hit the zero key or go enter. Okay. And there you go. So you just hit the enter key when you go on that. And that's a nice one. I like F7 because you can actually see the list of all the uh, commands that you have. Um, if this gets really long and you don't want to deal with all this stuff, you just hit Alt F7. So I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to go Alt F7, uh, like here. And let's see if this worked here. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. This one here. 
F7. Okay, nothing comes up. So if I go DIR, if I go time, and then I go F7 again, there we go. Now I have the two that are back here and it cleared out all the other history that was there before. Um, other than that, um, I'm going to hit escape here. If you're dealing with commands from another window, so you want to copy and paste something, it kind of works the same way. So let's say I want to go to C colon, um, I want to switch this, but let's say I want to copy this. So what you can do is with the mouse, you can just drag here and highlight what it is that you want and just use the shortcut keys, control C and control V to paste. So if I got that, I already copied it by hitting control C. If I hit control V now, okay, it puts it back there. So control C, control V, use the mouse to highlight the line that you want or part of the line that you want and you can copy. And this, you can do this from other windows and then bring it in here as well. So a number of these things I'll be using as we go forward here. But uh, if you want to bring up the command line uh, or the command prompt here or whatever, just hit Windows key R, type in CMD, enter. This will pop up and then you can use all the different commands. OK, so let's start using the different commands inside of Cloud Compare. OK, so let me start from scratch here. I am going to call up the command line window by doing Windows R. There's command, hit OK and it pops up here and I'm going to use the control and mouse wheel to make this larger just so everybody can see it much better. So there are a couple of ways that you can use or call functions. Okay. One is directly from the cloud compare folder, meaning that, um, if I'm working here right now, I'm in a different directory. I'm in my, my, you know, users, ELISC, uh, directory, but I can work from the cloud compare folder if I know where it is. And then I don't have to type in the paths. Now I can work from here. No problem. There, there's no problem in doing this, but let me go to the D. Okay, drive. So I just typed in D colon and hit enter. And I'm going to type in DIR enter. So you can see here I have a Dropbox folder and then I've got the Ford SUV and the parking lot, uh, e both E57 files. So that's what I'm going to be working with. So I can use it from here from the D directory. But if I want to sort of make it easier for me, I can go into the cloud compare folder. And for that, I think I have to go to my C drive and let me go to change directory. And I think C colon, let's see if that works. No, maybe I need the uh, backslash here. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So I just needed the backslash. I forgot that. So now I'm in C colon and let me go to directory. So I'm gonna have to go to my program files here. So you can see it says program files. So let me go change directory, CD space, program files. So I have to type it exactly as it's shown here with the space in between. Hit enter. I'm now into program files. Let me go into directory again and I should see if I scroll up here a cloud compare folder. So that's right up here. So I'm going to go back down and I'm going to go to change directory and go to cloud compare just like that. Okay. Now that I'm in this folder, I have all the cloud compare files so I can call the cloud compare command. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example of the uh, cloud compare command. And I'm just going to put that in a text file here and I'll drag that over like this. So to start with, what I have is cloud compare here. So that calls the cloud compare uh, command line uh, functions and then it says dash zero. So I have to do that in order to open a file. Okay, that's just telling it, hey, I'm going to open a file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the full path name, okay, plus the extension. So it's a, if it's an E57 file, if it's a bin file, whatever it might be, then I have to list it here. And then I can por perform a function on it, okay? And I'll, I'll get into these different types of functions over here. But the basics are that I have to basically call cloud compare. So right now I can type in cloud compare because I'm already in the cloud compare directory, okay? Now, if I'm not in the cloud compare directory like this, okay, so let's say I go back here and uh, I go back to uh, C colon backslash. Oh, I forgot. Change directory, C colon backslash. Okay, there we go. And if I'm here now, um, I can't just, I can't just type the same command. I can't just type in what I had before, which was just cloud compare. I have to tell it what the full path is. So for that, um, let me type in a, another command that I would use here. Actually, I'll put it in the text window here so everybody can see. And that would be more like this. So let me stretch this out a bit. 
Okay, so that would be, I have to put C colon slash program files, cloud compare, cloud compare. So this gets me to where I need to be. Okay, this, this calls the cloud compare function. And I have quotations here. So this is an important point. When you're working inside of Windows and you're working with file names and things like that, spaces can cause problems. You have to account for the spaces that are in there. So inside of Windows, I have, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I have a space between program files and uh, this is going to cause me a problem if I don't have these quotation marks. So by putting these quotation marks here uh, and putting everything inside, okay, it shows up. It tells Windows basically, hey, you have to include these, uh, this space that's in here, uh, when you're calling the function. So that's going to be important. But if I did this right now, okay, this would work from any uh, directory that I'm in. So if you want to just copy and paste that, then there's no problem there. But again, then I put file name here, uh, or sorry, open, and then the actual file name here. So we'll get into this, but this is the basic structure. Okay. You have to tell it, you have to tell it, Hey, I'm going to be using cloud compare. I'm going to be opening a file. This is the file that I'm going to be opening. And then these are the different commands or functions that I'm going to be operating or running in the background. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. So for this first function that we're going to be using here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert a file. So I had that forward SUV, uh, folder. Let me bring that back here. So that's this guy here, forward SUV. It's now an E57 file. And what we're going to do is we will convert it to a PLY and maybe we'll, I don't know, we'll convert it to like a text format or something like that, that we can use. Okay. Now, again, this is in my D drive. It's just in the, the very bottom D drive. It's not in any other folders or anything like that. That just made it convenient. And you'll also notice that I have spaces in these names. Okay. If you want to make your life easy, you can remove those spaces and then you don't have to type in the quotes around everything. Okay. But I'm going to make it more complicated, uh, just so people, cause a lot of people do type spaces and other things, uh, between their file names. So we'll just work with it that way. So, and I'm going to show this two ways for the first one, but then the rest, I'm just going to call cloud compare from any directory, um, just cause I can copy paste it in my notes here. So first things first, I'm going to go to directory. I'm going to do the first one inside of the cloud compare folder. So I'm going to change directory to the program files like this, and then I'm going to go directory again. And I know that I've got cloud compare up here. So I'm going to scroll up and there it is. There's cloud compare. So I need to go jump into that directory. So let's do that. So from here, I'm going to go change directory and I'm going to go cloud compare like that. Now I'm good. So because I'm working right from this particular directory, I can call the cloud compare file directory. So, or the uh, command. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste from my notes here and I'll have to make some changes and then I'll go through with it. So I'm going to paste. Okay. So what I need to do is I'm going to walk through this with you is I'm going to backspace here. So what I'm going to do now, because I'm, and I can only do this again, because I'm in the cloud compare folder is I'm going to call cloud compare. And then the, the dash O capital O is going to be open a file and I'm going to have it open the D colon Ford dash SUV dot E57. It has to be typed exactly as it's shown because I have a space. I need to put the open and closed quotation marks here. So please keep that in mind. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to do, I'm going to run this command. Okay. So it's negative or negative C or dash Z. So export FMT. Okay. So basically export format. And here in this, this PLY, you can change that. I'm going to do another one where I'm going to change that. But the basic command here is this right here. Okay. Right there. And then you specify what format. So it's going to open up the E57 file. It's going to convert it. It's going to convert this point cloud into PLY. Now, if you're working with meshes, you can do this too. It's a different command. Okay. It's, it's like a M. There's an M over here instead of a C. But I put the PLY and then what I have to tell it is to save the cloud. So in this, in this particular one, you have to save the uh, point cloud. Now, in some cases, you don't need to type this. Uh, whenever there's a function that creates a new um, file or something like that for you, then it will automatically save it as a bin file or something like that. But in this case, we have to add this particular function. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just click on enter. Okay. And what it's going to do, you see here, it calls the command line mode and it already converted it and it said the job is done. So let's just check that here in my folder. 
Okay, and there it is. You see that I've got this Ford SUV. Now you see I've got a date and I've got a time, and but it's now converted it to a PLY. So let's just double check that, make sure that it works. I'm gonna open that up into Cloud Compare and just hit, yeah, apply, and there you go. So I've got this PLY file, it's been converted and it did that all in the background. Cool. Okay, let me close that down and let's go back to the command line. I'm just going to click on OK and have that disappear. OK, I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to move to a different, uh, let's say I go to, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll go to the D drive, something like this. OK, no problem. Oh, that didn't, ch that didn't change. Let me see if I, if I change, if I change the drive completely, I can just type in D drive. Um, all right, so let's do the same thing. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Ford SUV E57 file and I'm going to convert it so that it is an ASCII file format. So basically like a text file format that I can read. So uh, I have a command here and I'll go through it and I'm just going to paste it in here. There we go. And that makes it easy for me. So because I'm in the D drive right now, Okay, I'm not in already in the Cloud Compare folder. If I want to call the Cloud Compare command line mode, I have to type in open quote, C colon program files, Cloud Compare, slash Cloud Compare, close quote, and then the dash O. So it's going to open, and it's going to open here, my D colon Ford SUV. And then I'm going to call the export format again. But this time, instead of PLY, I'm going to put in ASC. So that's ASCII format. And then it says, save the cloud. Okay, save the cloud. So with ASCII files, it's really just a text file. That's all it is. So it's, it, you can call it whatever you want after a TXT file. You can call it a, um, uh, whatever, a CSV file. You can call it like whatever you want. You can just rename it after, but this just puts it into a readable format that a human can read and that would work. So let's go ahead and click on enter and you'll see that it comes up. It's going to do the conversion. You'll see this one takes a little bit longer because when you're working, if it's not a, a binary format or not a compressed format, um, working with text is a little bit uh, slower here. So it says the job is done. So I'm going to go OK. Let's bring up the folder again and let's check it back here. So you see here I've got this ASCII format, .asc, so it did change that. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm actually just going to change this little trick. I'm just going to change it to a PTS file format. And it says, hey, you sure you want to change it? Yep. And so on my computer, I have PTS files as being recognized by Cloud Compare. So let's look at the PTS file. I'm going to open it up. And here you go. You can see that it converted all those into X, Y, Z coordinates. And then for the uh, RGB values, they're in this column. If I just go ahead and click Apply, it's going to load up all those points. And it should display it to us in a second here. And there we go. So we've got it. It works. Wonderful. Okay, great. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to close that out and let me move this out of the way. Let's move on to another command, another command that's super, super useful. The one that I actually use. So this is going to be the subsampling. So what subsampling does is if you take a point cloud that's really, really massive, um, you can tell it to only select points either within a certain space or you maybe you want to hit a certain random number of points. So if I have a billion points and I only want a hundred thousand points, I can tell it, hey, take this whole point cloud and reduce it to a random sampling of points that are, you know, a hundred thousand points. Um, the other one that's super useful is where you can tell it, look, I, I want a very specific spacing of points. So in the case of the parking lot that I showed you, I can say, hey, look, I want a smaller subset of those points that's spaced every centimeter, every 20 centimeters, every 30 centimeters or whatever. Okay, so what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to do this from uh, uh, from any directory. But let me type this in and let me copy it and I'll paste it here in my in my D. Again, I'm not doing this directly from the Cloud Compare folder, but this is how it would be set up. So basically, I have the open quote. C colon program files cloud compare and then cloud compare. So this will call the, the, uh, command line mode and then open the file. So negative O or dash O. And then what file do I want to open? Again, open quote D colon parking lot E57. And now I'm going to be working with the subsample command. Okay. So it's dash SS. So that's for subsampling the point cloud. What kind of sampling? I'm going to do spatial sampling. 
And for spatial sampling, I need to specify what the dimension is. Now in my files are in meters, so I'm going to specify these in meters as well. So if I take 0.1 meters, that's a 10 centimeter spacing, it'll reduce the point cloud size uh, considerably. But let's just try a different number. Maybe let's try, oh, I don't know, let's try 2, 0.2. And now if I hit enter, okay, this should go ahead and run. Now you can see here I've got 134 million points. So that's what I'm working with. And in this particular command, I didn't have to tell it to save the clouds. Okay. The, the space, the subsampling will automatically create a bin file for me. And so let's see what happens here. I'm going to go into my file folder and it's doing its thing still and it's kind of spinning here. So let me just give it a second. Okay. There it goes. It's done. So let me bring the folder over here. And you'll see here that I've got this parking lot spatial subsampled and there it is. It's a bin file. Let's just have a look as to, okay, well, you can definitely see it's much more grainy. Okay. There's a, a really, really, um, organized, uh, spatial subsampling. So this was at 20 centimeters here. And if I click on this on the point cloud, you see, I went from 134 million points down to 131,000 points, huge, huge reduction. Now this is kind of a, a very coarse point cloud, but this is just to show you that, you know, you can definitely, uh, you can definitely reduce the file size. And so this is the function that I used. I just went and took that massive point cloud and then in the background I ran it and uh, it did take some time, but it just was a lot easier to do in the background as opposed to loading up uh, cloud compare and using a little bit more resources. So that's that. Let's close that out. All right. Let me move this out of the way and let's move on to something else. Let me click OK here. Now for this other one, what I'm going to do here is, uh, if you remember at the beginning, I had a parking lot and I had the SUV and they were kind of sitting on top of each other. So when I, when I loaded the two, but they are two individual point clouds. So what I want to do is I want to fuse these point clouds together and make one complete point cloud. So for that one, I'm going to use the merge clouds command. So let me copy the command here. I'm going to put it in here. So you get to see what it's like. <clears throat> All right. So again, same thing as before. We're going to call the cloud compare. We got to point to the correct path where cloud compare is located. I'm going to open a file and then which file am I going to use? I'm going to use the SUV file. And I also have to merge the parking lot file. So basically all you have to do is list. So if you have two or three point clouds here, all you can do is you can just list them in quotes. So I'm going to take the Ford SUV and the parking lot and I'm going to merge them together. So basically I'm just using the merge clouds command. And so when I hit OK on this one, OK, this is going to go in and it's going to do its thing. Oh, let me do it one more time. There we go. So you can see it's got to load up those 134 million points on the parking lot. It's going to do the same with the SUV and then basically combine them and resave them again in my folder. So just give it a second here, just saving it and the job is done. So let me click on OK. Let's take the folder and let's have a look here. Let me reduce the size here of these things. So here, this one here. So it says Ford SUV merged and then there's a dot bin file. Now, interestingly, it called it uh, Ford SUV and uh, it was the first one that I called that I called here. So uh, I didn't test this, but probably if I put parking lot here first, it will probably merge everything and call it parking lot. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's something that you should test. I've got the bin file here. Let's open the bin file. And let's see if both are merged into one point cloud. So it looks like it's called Ford SUV. I still have, oh, now I have 139 million points. So it looks like it definitely did. There is the Ford that's in the parking lot here. And it looks like it's all together. It's all one point cloud. It's already merged for me. So I didn't even have to open up the cloud compare window to do this. So that's pretty cool. All right. I'm going to close this one out and click on OK. All right. Um, well, I'm giving you a whole bunch there. I think I'll just do one more because I think that you'll get the point here of uh, what's going on. So the last one that I'll do is just calling one of the um, uh, noise or the, the the cleaning for noise. It's the SOR. And I think it's called statistical outlier removal is what it is. So let me just copy that command and let me bring it in here. So for this one, you've got C colon program files, cloud compare, again, calling it, opening the file, 
pointing to which file you want. And now I'm going to type in dash S O R. And then I have to type in the parameters. Okay. So, uh, six was the, I can't remember what it is exactly. It's the number of points that it's going to use for like the average, uh, it's like for an average of points or neighboring points. And then this one here has to do with the standard deviation. So, uh, if you use one sigma or two sigma or three sigma, less and less points will be used. But if you go more aggressive, like 0.5, 0.4, then you'll see more. So I've got 0.5 here right now. Let me change this to something really aggressive. So I wouldn't normally do this. It's way too aggressive, um, but you'll see the difference of, of what it's doing. So let me just go ahead and click enter and it's going to work on the Ford SUV. Okay. It looks like it's already done. Let me bring up the folder here and it looks like right here, Ford SUV, uh, statistical outlier removal. Let's open up this bin file and look at what it's done here. Um, now we're not going to be able to tell the difference until we open up the other SUV. So let's do that. The original SUV is right here. Okay. So let me turn the original SUV off and on. So if I close this one, okay, you can see there's differences between the two. Uh, one has more points removed from it. Okay. So there's, uh, there's definitely a difference here using these statistical outlier removal. So those are a whole bunch of commands that you can use inside a cloud compare. That's how you can use the command prompt. Really, really useful when you're working with very large files and you don't want to like load it up on your screen, just kind of have it work in the background and calling a particular command. Now there are a whole host of other commands. And so let me see if I can bring this up here on the cloud compare, uh, website. And so if I just type in uh, cloud compare command line, you'll see that you can get to the, uh, the, I think this is the wiki page or whatever, but as you go down, it has all the different commands here that you can use. So uh, there is a ton of stuff that you can start to do. There's like uh, different, whatever, different functions for visualization. And I haven't done any really mesh stuff. I've been working with all the cloud compare stuff, uh, excuse me, with all the point cloud stuff, but um, you can call mesh commands, you can call uh, uh, ransack, uh, whatever. So you have a whole bunch of tools at your disposal. So make sure that you go on here and look at the different commands that you can run. Sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error when you're working with uh, the cloud compare command prompts, um, but there's also the cloud compare form. So you can just go to the cloud compare site. There's a form. If you have any problems, you can post on there. And I think this is super, super useful. So that does it for this episode of Cloud Compare. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, some really useful tools using command line with Cloud Compare. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.